Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, let's talk about a pretty heavy topic that's been making waves across the globe, China's infamous work culture. You might have heard about Chu Jing, an executive at Baidu, who stirred up a storm with her take-no-prisoners approach to managing her team. Her blunt remarks like, I'm not your mum, and threats of career sabotage have really put a spotlight on what many are calling a toxic workplace environment. We're going to look at China's 996 culture that's working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, and compare it to what we're used to here in the West. Trust me, it's a world of difference, and it sheds light on why many are calling for a change. So, stick around, and let's unpack this together. It's going to be an eye-opener. Alright, let's kick things off by talking about Chu Jing. She's a top executive at Baidu, and boy, did she shake things up. In a series of videos on Douyin, which is like TikTok but in China, she laid it all out. Chu Jing told her team that she's not responsible for their well-being, saying, I'm not your mum. She even went as far as to say she could ruin careers with just a few words if anyone dared to complain about her management style. Now, imagine hearing that from your boss. It's like walking on thin ice, right? Her blunt approach and harsh words didn't sit well with many. People across China took to social media to express their shock and dismay. The internet was buzzing, everyone wondering if this really reflected the company's values or if it was just Chu Jing going rogue. And then came the apology, Chu Jing took down the videos and said she was sorry. But the damage was done. The apology felt like a band-aid on a broken leg, especially when another controversial clip surfaced. This time, she was seen whipping a paper doll labeled SEMP after a negative article. Talk about adding fuel to the fire. In a bit, I'll show you a translated clip of Chu Jing so you can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another to see and hear the tone and delivery firsthand. It really puts into perspective how these remarks were no small slip-up but a reveal of a much larger issue within the corporate culture at Baidu. Now, let's shift gears and talk about what working in China can really be like. You might have heard of 996, it's not a secret code, it's a work schedule. From 9am to 9pm, 6 days a week. Just hearing that makes you tired, doesn't it? This isn't just about long hours, it's about a culture that pushes people to their limits without a pause. But wait, there's more. Ever heard of 007? No, it's not James Bond's new mission, it's even more intense than 996. Imagine being expected to be on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Companies like ByteDance and Pinduoduo are known for these grueling expectations. It's like being in a race with no finish line in sight. Comparing 996 and 007, you see a stark picture, 996 is like a marathon with a brutal pace, while 007 is like being asked to sprint that marathon nonstop. Both demand more than just time, they take a toll on people's health and spirits. Imagine missing family dinners, children's bedtimes, weekends with friends, all sacrificed at the altar of work. I've talked to folks who've lived this reality, and the stories are gut-wrenching. One person told me, it's like being a machine that's always on, but even machines need to rest. Another shared, you wake up, you work, you sleep, you dream of work. There's nothing else. This relentless grind isn't just a personal issue, it ripples through society, affecting relationships, mental health, and overall quality of life. It's a steep price to pay, and one has to wonder, is it worth it? Let's take a moment to cross the ocean and look at how things are done over here in the West, especially in the US and Europe. Now, it's not all nine, to be five with weekends off, but there's generally a clearer boundary between work and personal life. Even in the tech sectors and gig economy, where the lines can blur, like when app developers burn the midnight oil or Uber drivers cruise late into the night, there's still a sense of control over one's schedule. But here's the kicker, while the West certainly has its share of workaholics and demanding bosses, there are legal guardrails that keep the wildest excesses in check. For instance, in Europe, labor laws are pretty strict about how many hours you can work, ensuring you have time to unplug and catch your breath. In the US, although it can be a mixed bag, there are overtime laws that make sure you get paid extra if you cross the usual 40-hour workweek threshold. Now, with the rise of the gig economy, we're seeing some of those boundaries get pushed. People are talking about hustle culture, where you're always grinding, always on call. It's a bit of a throwback to the early days of Silicon Valley, where working round the clock was worn like a badge of honor. But even then, it's not quite 996 or heaven forbid, 007. Plus, there's a growing pushback against this non-stop hustle, with more folks advocating for a healthier work-life balance and support for mental health. So, while the West isn't perfect, the conversation here is about finding balance and remembering that workers aren't just cogs in a machine, 
they're human beings who need time to live their lives outside of work. And that's a crucial difference, it's not just about the hours you put in, but also about respecting the person doing the work. Now, let's dig into the real cost of these work cultures. When your job demands almost every waking hour, what's left for life? The toll on health is more than just feeling tired. It's about chronic stress, less time for exercise, poor eating habits, and not enough sleep. Imagine running your car nonstop without ever taking it in for maintenance. Sooner or later, things are going to break down. Then there's the impact on society. How do you build a family or maintain relationships if you're always at work? It's like trying to grow a garden without water. And let's not forget about mental health. The pressure cooker environment of 996 and 007 can lead to burnout and serious anxiety. It's not just about being tired, it's about feeling trapped on a treadmill that's always speeding up. Speaking of traps, let's talk about this whole wolf culture thing, a popular metaphor in some Chinese corporate circles. They say you've got to be a wolf, fiercely independent, always on the hunt. But even wolves need their pack. They rest, they play, and they take turns leading. This myth of the lone wolf who never stops is not just unrealistic, it's unhealthy. And how does this all look from the US? Well, there's a big misconception. Some folks think because this is the norm in China, it's okay to call or email Chinese colleagues anytime. It's like assuming someone's always home just because the lights are on. We need to rethink that. It's not respectful, and it just perpetuates the problem. So, are companies doing anything about this? Some are. After a lot of public outcry and even some tragic incidents linked to overwork, Chinese authorities and some companies have started to push back against 996. But change is slow, and often, company statements about reducing hours are more about good PR than actual practice. It's like putting up a speed limit sign but never enforcing it. As we wrap up this section, it's clear that this isn't just about working hard, it's about working smart and respecting the human element. After all, a machine can run 24-7, but even machines need downtime for maintenance. And unlike machines, people need time to live, laugh, and love, it's what fuels our spirits and keeps us truly productive. Alright, folks, we've covered a lot of ground today. From Chu Jing's controversial management style at Baidu, to the relentless 996 and 007 work cultures, and how these compare to work standards in the West. We've seen how these demanding schedules not only exhaust the body but also strain the soul, and how they clash with the idea that to be productive, we must also have time to recharge and live our lives outside of work. It's clear that while ambition is a powerful fuel, it shouldn't burn us out. Work is a part of life, not the whole of it. We talked about the myth of the lone wolf, always on, always solitary. Remember, even wolves thrive on cooperation and balance. Now, I want to hear from you. How does your country handle work-life balance? What kind of hours are you putting in? And what do you think can be done to make sure that while we work to live, we don't live just to work? Drop your thoughts and stories in the comments below. Let's get the conversation going. The more we share, the more we can understand and advocate for a global standard that respects personal time and values human well-being. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you think it's a conversation worth spreading. Thanks for tuning in, and let's keep fighting the good fight, together, we can make sure that our jobs enrich our lives, instead of running them.